All right, today we're going to start Unit 6. Unit 6 is on polynomials, solving polynomials, graphing polynomials, and using them to solve real-world problems. Now, what we're going to talk about to begin with is polynomial basics. And to begin with, we're going to deal with vocabulary words, some that are familiar to our already. First word, monomial. A monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and a variable. And the key uh, prefix is mono, which means one. That means there is only one term. Some examples of a monomial would be, for instance, the number six, or maybe the number negative four, or the variable y. Or if we multiply a number and a letter together, maybe 7x. Those are all examples of monomials because they are single terms and they're numbers, variables, or products of numbers and variables. Vocabulary word number two, binomial. Just like monomial, except bi means two. So two monomials added or subtracted together would be a binomial. For instance, 3x minus 4 because I have two terms. Terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So there would be the first term and there would be the second term. So it's binomial. Another example could be uh, x to the third plus 4. Again, two terms. The first term and the second term. Trinomial. Three monomials added or subtracted together. The prefix tri. tri. So we just studied these when we did quadratic equations. x squared plus 2x minus 7 would be an example of a trinomial because here's the first term, the second term, and the third term. Now, this unit, we're talking about polynomials, which can be a lot longer than any of those examples. A polynomial can be any one of these. These that I'm putting a box around, these are all polynomials. But they could also be the sum or difference of a bunch because the prefix poly means many. So, for instance, this unit, you may see things like x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 4x squared minus 7x plus 5. That would be an example of a polynomial because it has many terms. In fact, it has 1, 2, 3, 4. This one has five terms. And that's what we're going to study, and that's what we're going to talk about. And especially in this video, we're going to deal with some of the basics of polynomials. If you need to pause, please do to copy that down. And then I'm going to go to the next slide. Now, on this slide, we're going to talk about classifying polynomials by degree. I have a bunch of names over here. Constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, quintic. Now, a constant function has a degree of 0. That means there basically are no variables. So, for an example, negative 9 is an example of a constant. A number is a constant. Units 2 through 4, we studied linear equations. That has a degree of 1. For instance, x plus 7, because the highest power of x is a 1. A quadratic function we studied in unit 5, its highest degree is 2. For example, x squared minus 7x plus 9. Its highest degree is 2. A cubic polynomial has the highest power 3 for cubic. So, for instance, you could have 4x to the third minus 3x squared plus 7x minus 8. This is a third degree polynomial because its highest degree is 3. Quartic. Its highest degree is 4. For instance, if I have x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus x, there's an example of a 4th degree polynomial. 
And the last one that you're going to need to note in order to classify a polynomial, if it has a degree of 5, x to the 5th plus 4x to the 4th minus 3x to the 3rd plus 7x minus 8, for instance, the highest degree is a 5, and therefore it is called a quintic polynomial. The degree of a polynomial, the definition for the degree of a polynomial is the term with the greatest degree. The term that has the greatest degree, that will tell you the degree of the polynomial. Now also, you're going to notice when I wrote these equations. I wrote them in descending powers. For instance, the quadratic, power 2, and then the power of x1, and then over here, this is really x to the 0. This is called descending powers. The quartic, I had the fourth power term first, the squared power term next, and the first power term next. This is called standard form. When you write polynomials in descending order of the powers. And this is how I expect that we will always write our polynomials in standard form. The lead coefficient. When you have your polynomial written standard form, the lead coefficient is the number in front of the term with the highest degree. So for instance, in the cubic, if my highest degree is 3, my lead coefficient is 4. That would be my lead coefficient. In the, in the quintic example, there is no number there, so it's a 1. That would be my lead coefficient. The number that is in front of the term with the highest degree is your lead coefficient. So I hope that helps you with classifying polynomials by degree. And in the first slide, which I'm going to go back to right now, monomial, binomial, trinomial, polynomial is how you classify based on number of terms. So now you can classify polynomials based on how many terms they have or how many degrees they have. All right. Next, we're going to talk about degree of a monomial. The degree of a monomial is the sum of all the powers. So I've got four examples for you here. The first example, x to the fourth. Well, if I look at all the powers, all I see is the number 4. So this monomial has a degree of 4. Here's a constant function, 12. This is really 12x to the 0 power because there aren't any x's. So therefore, the degree of this monomial is 0 because there aren't any powers. The third example, I see a combination of letters. This power of A is 2. This power of B is 1. Well, it says i got to sum them up. So if I add them all together, this monomial, 4A squared B, has a degree of 3. And last, A cubed B to the fourth, Z to the first. I add my powers, 3 and 4 and 1 give me this monomial has a degree of 8. So very simply, just go ahead and add the powers if it's a monomial to figure out its degree. Last part of section 6.1 deals with adding and subtracting polynomials. And very simply, adding and subtracting polynomials works just like you've learned combining like terms. However, you must always write the answer in standard form. So example number one, let's say that we're going to add 3x squared 
plus 7 plus x, and we're going to add that to 14x to the third plus 2 plus x squared minus x. So I'm adding a bunch of polynomials together. Now, really, I do not need the parentheses at all because there's no distributing or multiplying. And so, really, all I do is I look down the line, what is the highest power term? Because i got to write in standard form. Well, I see x to the third. There are no other x to the thirds, so I'm going to write 14x to the third right here. That takes care of that one. The next term then would be one power less, x squareds. There's three x squareds here, and there's one x squareds here, which if I put those together, that would make four x squareds. Now I look for numbers x to the first power. Well, here's x to the first. That's one x to the first minus one x to the first. Well, those are going to cancel out. That gives me zero x to the first, so I don't write those. And then finally, my terms or my constants, plus 7 and plus 2, that makes plus 9. And there is my final answer. I've added my two polynomials together, and they are in descending power, and they're written in standard form. The last one is subtracting polynomials. And again, this works very similarly. However, I'm going to do one where you've got to distribute. 1 minus x squared minus the polynomial 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. All right, so now we're going to distribute. This little negative sign, negative 1, basically means change all the signs of the second polynomial. So I get 1 minus x squared here, and then negative 1 times 3x squared is minus 3x squared. Negative 1 times positive 2x is negative 2x, and negative 1 times negative 5 is plus 5. Now I combine my like terms and write it in standard form. Here's my highest terms, x squareds. Minus 1 and minus 3 makes minus 4x squareds. There's only a minus 2x. There's no other x to the first terms. And then 1 plus 5 makes plus 6. And there you go. I have written my final answer in standard form. And that is polynomial basics. And to begin this unit, section 6.1. Further questions, please ask during class.